Okay, so this video is hopefully going to help um, anybody who's trying to learn to fly the blackfish and give them some advanced pointers and give them some useful um, hints and tips in terms of how to successfully land one of these or potentially while you're practicing how to crash one of these. Um, make no mistake, these things are very very big, very very heavy and very very cumbersome and you need to treat them as such, you need to be really soft and gentle in terms of how you fly these things. If you throw them around um, whilst not in flight mode then yeah, I guarantee that you will kill yourself and anybody else who is on board. Now then to add some value and weight in terms of uh, what I'm going to attempt to do here is that this is going to be a fully loaded um, blackfish. Um, armed to the teeth with um, killer marines, ready to offload at any point in time. So, there are some key things that you need to remember about this blackfish. Um, it will take off and land like a standard aeroplane, or it can take off and land like a helicopter. Now the things that you need to bear in mind, no matter which flight mode that you decide to use, be it aeroplane or in helicopter mode, is 150 knots. Once you hit 150 knots you can then move those rotors to any angle you like, no problem whatsoever, you'll be able to fly perfectly fine. However, as you begin to slow down in flight your concern at 150 knots should be about getting those blades up to that angle. Okay, so what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to fly this as though it was a regular aircraft. Actually, I've noticed I've got a blackfish just parked a bit too close to the uh, to the, to the uh, runway there, but I think we should be fine. We should be fine. Um, and we'll land it and take it off as though it was a standard aircraft. This aircraft will taxi as per any normal aircraft, even in standard flight mode. Um, it just requires um, prox um, I'd, I would say about half to three quarters of a throttle, probably just a bit more, just to get a bit of willy to get it going, and then you can just double back slightly on that throttle as you as you feel your way around. But that uh, half throttle is, is appropriate. I'm using a whole task as you already know. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, also track IR, so you can see my head's busy. I'm checking all around. Um, I think even if I go past that uh, that blackfish, uh, I should pass it fine because the blades are different orientations. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, uh, I am going to lower my flaps. I'm just going to use a button uh, for my flaps here, and then we'll start the engines. I'll close the ramp. We're not touching the vectoring at this time, so we are just in a standard flight model. As you can see, the flaps are down, and we are going to take off in a standard flight mode. We will make a um, left hand turn, we will go around this island in standard flight mode and then we will come back to land um, as per normal, as a normal aircraft would, um, not in vertical, uh, not in a vertical configuration such as a helicopter landing. Okay so here we go, we're going to begin, uh, I'm just going to go to half throttle and you'll just see that I've just pushed my nose forward slightly just to give it a bit of forward movement, I'm just moving it down a bit as well. I'm just going to move the aircraft ever so slightly to the left. There we go, and now I'm going full throttle. And you'll see that now we are taking off beautifully. Now then, once you actually go above 20 meters, you'll see that the rotors automatically turn to flight configuration mode. If I go back down below 20 meters, they will go back to a semi upright orientation. Let's just keep our eye on the altitude. Airspeed is fine, I've got no concerns about airspeed. But I'm going to just reduce the airspeed, not the airspeed, sorry, the altitude. Just going to bring us lower. There we go 50, 40, 37, 28, 26, 24. I don't want to put this thing in the ground. Army troops on board, and you'll see now 16, and the blades are going up automatically. Didn't touch anything, that just happened on its own. Let me get myself now back into a normal flight configuration, speeding up, and I'm going to climb out of this now and take us back to the island um, for our uh, 
for our standard landing. So to bear in mind, uh, 150 knots is our key airspeed to bear in mind, no matter which approach that we decide to use. So if you're going to come in for a standard regular landing in this aircraft, and you, you, you want to you know, make sure that it, it works well for you, you don't need to worry about the angle of the rotors. As long as you just keep in mind that airspeed needs to be coming in at around about 170, 160, 150, once you get below 20 metres, those blades will automatically tilt out of the way. So then your concern becomes, obviously, is the airspeed and your ability to stop. So you want to touch down nice and early. You don't need to make any crazy manoeuvres. Just consider it like a standard, normal airline approach. Okay, I've put my, my flaps are never actually put up to be quite honest with you, it's not made any difference. I've just now uh, lowered my landing gear and I'm now coming in for an approach. I've now reduced probably now to about quarter throttle now and I'm also now also just reducing my altitude. I'm 10 degrees down if you look at my, uh, my artificial horizon. I'm doing this by the eyeball, I'm not really using the artificial horizon. But I would advise you that as you learn to fly this, is that you absolutely get a grip with this artificial horizon in the middle here. That's the, the blue top and the orange bottom. Because when you're in helicopter mode, it's going to be absolutely pivotal to be being, and being able to fly this chopper. So as you see now, my airspeed is now at 1, 200 knots there, thereabouts for argument's sake. I'm just going to bring the altitude down now to about 100 metres as we turn for a final approach into the airfield. We actually haven't got eyes on the airfield yet. Oh, hold on, I think we've overshot it slightly there. I need to zoom in slightly. Ah, yes, there we go. Right. I'm just reducing my airspeed even more now. Just maintaining um, a stable descent. Why have I not got eyes on this runway? There we go. Might be my object drawing distance, but it's not going to make any difference here now. We're now coming below 60 metres. 80 knots. I'm just going to back this tail up slightly. There we go. We're on a standard approach. No problem. Here we go. We're going to land. As in a standard config. And there you go. We're down. Happy. Healthy. Nobody's injured. Is a nice, calm, stable landing. And you can repeat that over and over and over again, and you should be fine. So, as I say, bear in mind 150 knots and 20 meters and below, those rotors automatically move themselves in standard flight mode. You'll note in the corner of the screen, vectoring wasn't on. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce my throttle and just for um, for the sake of the next part of the exercise, I'm going to bring my flaps back up again. Let's just take a look at the aircraft so you'll see the flaps are up. Except now I'm going to go into vectoring mode so you'll see I've activated vectoring. And I'm just going to move my rotors up. Okay, so my um, the tilt of my rotors is you, it's the same button as I use for flaps. Um, you can lock and combine your buttons any way that you like as part of your configuration, that's just how I do it with mine. Um, I leave actually the X key um, as my method of turning vectoring on and off. Um, but there you go, that's each throw, and that's what I do. Um, you don't have to do the same. Right, so now we are going to take off as if we are a standard helicopter, and that's dead, dead simple. We just basically apply the power so I can go again. Um, three quarters throttle and then all the way up to full throttle and the vehicle just lifts automatically up in the air and it will just continue to climb. Not touching any sur control surfaces, my hands aren't even on any controls, my throttle is at 100%, I'm not touching my pedals, I'm not touching my joystick, nothing, we're just climbing. What I'm going to do now is just bring in my landing gear so there we go. Excellent. Now, have you just seen in some of my previous videos when I'm trying to um, advise people how to fly helicopters? Is it my advice to people is that if you're going to come to a landing zone, don't come into a landing zone 
you know, at a height greater, really, than about 100 metres. Because otherwise you struggle to get your eye, as you're coming down, in on your landing zone, and you can't see where you're going beyond a certain point. So take a low into, taking a low approach into an LZ is absolutely key. I've just reduced throttle slightly, ever so slightly, and you'll see that this is beginning now to drop rather rapidly, and I mean I've only just moved it a hair's whisper, and it's beginning to already become unstable. I've gone back to 100% throttle, and it's still descending, I'm at 100% throttle, and it's only just maintaining now any form of altitude, and it's beginning to grow, it's beginning to gain altitude again. Um, but we must have lost maybe 100, 150 metres very, very rapidly. Um, in uh, just minutely moving the throttle. The throttle controls in helicopter mode are very, very, very sensitive. Now I'm just going to look at the map, and what I've done is I've just dropped four markers, random. And I just thought what we'll do is we'll just choose some random places. Airfield, obviously, is, a, is an obvious choice. And then I've got these fields that I'm going to try and drop with the... Um, the... Uh, the blackfish into. So I'm going to go into standard flight mode here. Above 150 kilometers we can go into any flight mode we like. And we can leave it in vectoring as well. So there's our marker, 3.8 kilometers away. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to absolutely just cane it to the floor. <laughs> I wouldn't advise that you do this in normal flight, but as an example more than anything else. And at about, about 1.5 kilometers you really need to be thinking about your approach. So right now I'm actually at zero throttle. I'm going to lower my landing gear at about 200 knots. I'm still in standard flight mode. I'm going to lower my gear now. And I'm just going to change the configuration slightly here. Back to zero on my throttle. I'm now not going to go above 10 degrees bubble on my throttle and I'm now a hundred percent throttle and as you'll see now we begin to sink rapidly I'm probably going to die now and kill everybody but I'm a hundred percent throttle I've just reduced it now a touch and there we go and there was just a, a few quick manoeuvres in there. In my approach wasn't perfect, as you saw. I, I was, um, you know, 400 knots, three kilometres away. So what I did is you would do in a helicopter, go to zero throttle, ever so slightly pitch that nose up. But just as I, as I began to come around, just by, behind where we are now, to slow down, you'll see that I took my eye off the LZ. Um, and this thing sinks very, very, very rapidly. And before, I was saying to you about paying attention to your artificial horizon. The, uh, the, uh, between the tens, you'll see a dash between the horizon and the tens, there's another dash which is five. Yeah? You never really want to pitch the vehicle when in, this, when in this configuration higher than the five or lower than the five because what happens is it vents and bleeds all of that energy from the blades and the rotors. So by keeping it within um, that tolerance of negative 5 or plus 5, that's, um, that's going to keep you and everybody else in your vehicle alive as you begin to adjust throttle and control. You'll feel, it'll feel much more responsive to you. Um, so. That was just a rehash, really, of just what I was doing on that approach. But what I'll do now is be a little bit more considerate about what I do for this next one. And just give you um, another uh, vertical takeoff and landing. So here we go. I'm just going to take off ever so slightly vertically. We've got that now. I'm going to go one notch forward on my uh, rotors. Induce some forward movement. I'm going to tip the nose down ever so slightly. I'm, I don't need to look at my artificial horizon here. I'm all right. I'm understanding what's going on with the vehicle just by the orientation. We're at 130, 140, so I'm going to give it another notch. There we go. So now let's give it full. Full rotors and off we go. Gears up. We're in full flight configuration. And now we begin to come around for our second LZ. Just 
just to confirm, this vehicle has a full load of troops in it, including co-pilot and um, whoever these gentlemen are behind me. So as you're coming in for your approach, as you're doing your practice, again I would give around about, maybe as you're training yourself, around about 1.5 kilometers slowdown speed. I'm just going to change my configuration here, I'm going to give it two notches up, and I'm going to bring the nose of the vehicle up and also reduce throttle now as well, I'm only about half throttle, slowing down, pitching the nose up, okay, 170, bringing the gear down, 160, now in full flight mode, and now what I've got is the nose up, now I'm balancing the throttle for my LZ, levelling off to maintain airspeed currently because we haven't got our eye on the LZ. And currently I'm now I'm just balancing it between bleeding airspeed and maintaining altitude. So we're now in a full flight, conf uh, full hover configuration. I've now kind of got my eye on the LZ. Yeah, okay, I'm alright with that. I'm just going to twist it around slightly. Yeah, don't want to go beyond 5 degrees. There we go. And just let the vehicle let itself down ever so slightly. We are down on the ground and we can let our troops disembark this vehicle. Off you go, guys. So imaginarily we will let our crew disembark. And what we want to do is we want to get out of there pretty quick. So what we'll do is we'll just give ourselves one notch of rotor. And then we'll get the hell out of Dodge. There we go. All the way up now to 150. And then we'll go into full flight configuration. I'm going to give it another notch at 120, why not? And there we go, now in full flight configuration, I'm bringing my gear up. But I'm also now disabling vectoring. The reason being, we're going to land at this next airfield. Okay, here we go. Just get our eye in on the airfield. So what I'm just going to do is going to throw it this way slightly. I've just reduced my throttle now to around about 30 or 40 percent throttle. And I just want to bleed off some of this airspeed before I make a turn. I also need to bleed some altitude. Okay, making a turn, just increasing my throttle slightly. I'm now yawing quite heavily on the pedals now. As you can see, we're going to just pitching the nose down while I'm yawing. And I've got my eye now on the airfield, beginning my approach. Lowering my landing gear. I'm now lowering my flaps to full flaps. Okay, I'm now down to zero throttle for a moment. Just need to straighten and align this vehicle up. 180 knots. I want to hit this right on the white lines if I can. Now's no time to scratch your nose. Okay. Okay, I'm going to maintain 150. If I don't maintain 150 knots, I'm going to sink like a rock and crash. But below 20 meters, my rotors will change configuration. There you go, they've done it themselves. Level out and land. As I say, 150 knots in standard flight model. If you go below that and you are above 20 meters, you will lose all your energy your craft will just crash and burn so as I say don't uh, don't do that don't take risks okay so zero throttle there we go well done and then we'll just do our last LZ vectoring back on uh, and here we go right so vectoring back on I'm just going to leave it at one notch forward, that's perfectly fine. Um, and here we go. 
full throttle. I'm just going to pitch the nose down. Forward one more notch. Now we're at 150 and I'm going to go full flight configuration. Gear up. There was no sync, there was no nothing because the wings were doing what they were supposed to do at 150 knots, which is give me the appropriate amount of lift for a vehicle this size. So we're good, we're happy. Please note I've maintained my vectoring. We're currently three kilometres away. If I do anything now, it's going to be far too soon. However, you will notice that I'm just trying to maintain an airspeed currently of around about 260. So I am adjusting the throttle with micro movements um, as we are coming around. Okay, you'll see that I'm now beginning to yaw the vehicle down just to help lower my altitude. I'm actually also now reducing altitude um, actively. I'm also now reducing throttle actively. 1.9 kilometres away. Artificial horizon wise you'll see I'm in stable level flight although I am decelerating and I am actually also um, just moving around with the altitude. My landing gear is coming down. I'm now just going to move my um, vehicle into vertical flight mode at around about 160, 150. Oh, I need to increase that throttle. Oh, there we go. Don't want to ruin it all too soon, do we? Don't want it all going peaked on too soon. Oh, no, 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 no! Oof. Save that. As I say, it's very, very, very touchy. So luckily I just made the, uh, the right movements at the right time there. That was pure luck. I think, um, you know, even I need to practice some more on this. Um, however, that said, um, my biggest advice is if it gets a bit out of shape, is actually levelling the vehicle off rather than pulling it up or pushing it down below the horizon line seems to make a big difference. So, uh, you know, if you start getting a bit squirrely, level the vehicle off and it should be fine. I mean, I'm just trying to get it down on the marker for accuracy. And then I could just have landed at any point then. Um, but just to show that, you know, with some practice you can get it into the right places. You know, they may be tight places. Just to show it can be done. Here you go, I'm not even on the ground yet. There we are, we are now. Zero throttle. Okay, open ramp. Engine off. Get out. I hope that's been a help for you guys, I really do hope that's given you some really useful tips and advice. So your key things are, is there anybody dead in there? Doesn't look like anybody's dead, does it? Let us lean into my screen. They all look fairly happy, don't they? Although it's wondering why it's taking so long to get out. Um, yeah, so bear in mind, 150 knots, that's key. Once you're below 150 knots, you really do need to be in a vertical configuration. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to come in for standard landing, below 20 meters the rotors will automatically rotate um, and if you're coming in in a helicopter mode maintain um, the the artificial horizon of generally uh, between them two uh, five degrees of bubble um, on your artificial horizon you can go to 10 if you want to slow down a lot um, but let that just come with practice. First of all, just use those little hints and tips I've given you and just develop your own landing uh, techniques based on that. And I really hope it works. Put your comments uh, down below, hit like, subscribe, all that usual good stuff. And uh, I'll bid you good luck. Bye.